We talked this morning a little bit with the children about what is in a name, how important a name is. And this morning, <clears throat> as we look at the name of God again, another name of God shows us again how great and awesome God is because of his name. <clears throat> we looked at the definition of the names of four of these kids here how important they are too and as we talked about our own names and thinking about our own names what our name means it's important to know that isn't it because it sees about it helps us remember some of the character that God wants to have in our in our within us again the same is true of God his name defines him it shows of his character and shows something very important about God in our passage this morning it seems like an unlikely passage doesn't it to talk about God's name. Where in this passage will we find a name of God? It speaks though an important thing about God's name. How important it should be respected and honored, isn't it? We read in this story this morning there's a man. His mother is an Israelite. His father is an Egyptian. Uh, and what's interesting, we don't know anything about the father in the story. He's, he's missing in action in the story. We don't know if the father is with the nation of Israel or if he's back home in Egypt still. Uh, what we do know is that Israel isn't in the wilderness at this point. Because Moses has been leading Israel around the wilderness in preparation to bring them to the Holy Land. Remember in Exodus 20 that God had given them the Ten Commandments. Do you remember what the Ten Commandments are? Honor your father and mother. Honor your father and mother. Yeah, that's one of them. Have no other gods before me, yeah. No, no graven images. No graven images. Yeah, no graven images. No yeah. Anything. Yeah. No, but Jesus kind of changes the Ten Commandments into just two in the New Testament, right? Jesus says, all the commandments can be summed up in these, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so, yeah, the Ten Commandments are split up into a way where it's love God, love people, right? First four have to do with God, then the next six has to do with people. And, and one way we're missing right now of the Ten Commandments is is to not use the Lord's name in vain. In other words, don't use God's name as a cuss word or as a curse. Um, I don't know if you know the name Ray Comfort. He's a well-known evangelist down in the States. And often, if you ever watch one of his videos online, you'd see where he asks people, have you ever used the Lord's name as a cuss word? Use it as, as to express disgust for something. Kind of a sad way to use God's name, isn't it? It's an appropriate way, inappropriate way to use God's name. When the story, this man, this, half, this person who's half Jewish and half Egyptian, does exactly that. He ends up with a fight with a man from the, who is a full-blooded Hebrew. They have this fight. We don't know if it's physical or not, but we know that there's words exchanged because he uses God's name in vain and curses God. So he breaks one of the Ten Commandments here. Kind of scary thought here. And, but back in this time, even though they had the Ten Commandments, God haven't, hasn't told them yet how they were to deal when someone breaks one of the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> Particularly this commandment. Not to use the Lord's name in vain. So what do they do? Well, in our passage we find that, they, that this man is brought before Moses. And because Moses doesn't know what to do either, he says, okay, let's put him under guard and we'll wait from the Lord and hear from the Lord what he wants us to do. In the last few verses here, we read what happens and what says that that person is to be put to death. Kind of a scary thing, hey? We don't do that today, do we? We don't put people pulled to, put people to death for using God's name in vain, do we? In a way, to me, it shows how gracious God is. That God doesn't smite anyone in that moment when we use the Lord's name in vain. But it's an awful thing to do. And here's partly why. 
The name Hashem is used in this passage. Let's read. Um, verse 11. And the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name and cursed. Then they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shulamite, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. Of Dan. And they put him in custody till the will of the Lord should be clear to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Bring out to the camp the one who cursed, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him, and speak to the people of Israel, saying, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him, the sojourner as well as the native. When he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. In this very last verse here of this passage that we're reading here, notice it says here, when he blasphemes the name. The word name there is the Hebrew word Hashem. And it's not, in your Bibles, you probably notice that the word name is actually, cap, the N is capitalized, right? You notice that? If you know grammar, why do we capitalize at the beginning of a word? Not just because of the sentence, but if in the middle of the sentence there's a word with a capital on it, why is that usually the case? It's a for a name or a city or a place like a noun. You're right. It's a noun that's a name for a city, place, or a person. Sometimes a thing, sometimes, right? So when we see that capital at the beginning of the word, we know that there's something different than the rest of the words, right? Or maybe different in how the, word, the word's been used. In this case, because the N is capitalized in English, it's saying something. And in Hebrew, if you were to understand the grammar of it, you would understand that what is being said here in this verse, the word Hashem, is not just the word name, but is the name. So the name of God is the name. Not just any name, it is the name. So God's name is the name. It would be kind of like me saying that I'm just not any Kevin, I am the Kevin. <laughs> now that would be pretty egotistical of me, wouldn't it, right? That's not the humble way for us as humans to be, right? So but that's the true of understanding of God. His name is the name. Not just any name. His name is the name. The name that there's several things we'll look at here in a moment here that shows again how great and awesome God is. Let's look at this name Hashem a little bit more. As I looked up at the de definition of Hashem, yes, it does mean name, but also means fame and reputation. Now, it means fame and reputation in a good sense, where there is high reputation and high value of fame in him because of how great and awesome he is. I think that's why God speaks about how slander is such an awful thing. He, he doesn't want us to slander anyone's name let alone his. His name is to be treated with respect. Because God is so great and so good, when his name is misused, that angers him. Not only does it anger him, but it hurts him too. And since God is such an awesome God, why would we want to hurt our Lord and Savior? Plus, in addition to that, this name Hashem actually points directly back to the first name we looked at in our series, the name Yahweh Hayah. And if you remember, Yahweh means Lord and Hayah means I am. So Hashem points right back to the Lord I am. Again, shows how great God is. Shows how great His name is. 
And so it is a name that means must be treated with awe and respect. But that's not what this young man does, is it? He blasphemes God's name, he speaks God's name, he uses it as a cuss word, and then he curses God and this person that he's fighting with. It's a reminder for us not to do that. To blaspheme actually means to slander someone. We mentioned that just a moment ago. God doesn't want us to slander anyone. He doesn't want us to slander especially himself. And so when we hear the term blaspheme, it actually means to slander someone. And because God is good, we should never slander his name. It's like seeing someone that someone saying that God is bad, or, or as Ray Comfort would say, expressing disgust for something. That's not an improper way to use God's name, is it? How would we like it if someone used our name to express disgust? How many would you like how many of you would like that? <coughs> None of us, right? I know no hands are up. Because no we we are prideful with our name, right? Not in a bad sense, but in a good sense. We're, we're we like our name and we like what it means and we like when people call our name. Oftentimes I call my wife honey and sometimes I have to remember to call her Sherry sometimes because it's important to say her name. Yes, it's nice to have these nicknames or these pet names we have for each other, but it's important to say our, our name, the person's name still, because it honors that person. The same is true of God. We should never use his name as a cuss word or, or to slander or to express disgust, but to show how great and awesome God is. The good thing we've seen in this passage too though, even though God is saying, punish this person, this is how to punish the person for blaspheming my name. The good thing we see though in this is that only the person bears their own sin. I think that again speaks of God's character. This man who had blasphemed God's name, had used God's name as a cuss word, God was going to hold him accountable for his sin, but he wasn't placing that on his mother. He wasn't placing it even on the father. That person was going to bear his own sin. The consequences of it in that situation. I think it shows again how gracious God is. Yes, God's word does talk about how the sins of the father will be visited upon onto three or four generations after, but um, that's regarding the effects of the father's sin. It still shows God's grace in that he's not going to hold those people accountable for their father's sin. Again, it shows the greatness of God's name. So here's what we understand even more about God's name. First of all, the name Hashem is above every name. Philippians 2 verse 9 says this, Therefore God was highly, has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Apostle Paul writes this letter to the church in, in Philippi and reminds the church there and reminds us today that God's name is above every other name. There is no, no other name more important than God and his names. Yes, our names are important because it expresses character to us. It's who we want to be called. It also helps when our parents are trying to get our attention to do the dishes. Right? But God's name is above every name. Next, the name is I Am. I mentioned this earlier. The name Hashem refers again back to Yahweh, Hayah. The name is I Am. Exodus 3 verse 14 to 15 says this. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel. The Lord, the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me. This is my name forever, and thus I will be remembered throughout all generations. His name is Yahweh Hayah, and his name Hashem, again, points us back to I Am, 
that he is the one true God. The name ha Hashem also is the name that is near to us. Psalm 75 verse 1 says, I will give, I give thanks to you, O God. I give thanks for your name is near. Isn't that awesome to hear? Yes, there's times in our lives where we feel like God is far away. Sure, and I were talking about one hymn and we're disagreeing about the meaning of one line in the song this morning. But we were talk the, the key factor we're talking about is that God is always near to us. That's the neat thing to know that God is always near to us. He's never far apart. Even for those who aren't Christians, God is still near. He is in earshot's distance of those who are unbelieving, waiting and ready to hear them make that confession of faith. God is near. That's why we can sing songs like it as well. We can sing songs like Do It Again too. Other many songs that express of how God is near us, even when we feel like it's the darkest hour or darkest moment. No matter what we face, what trials and tribulations, whether it be storms, like thunderstorms, or maybe it's loss of a job, or maybe it's someone who's trying to harm us in some way. No matter the darkness we face, God is still near. The name above all names, the name I am, is near to you. Even those times again when you feel like he's far. Remember the footprints poem? There's these two sets of footprints, one man and the Lord walking together, and then at the end of his life he, he looks back and sees the, all the footprints and then sees some times where there's single, some lanes of single footprints only. And the man asks God, well, we're, I know those are the most troubling times of my life. Why weren't you with me? And God said, those are the times where I carried you. God, Hashem, the name above all names is near you, always near you. Also, the name is a strong tower. Proverbs 18.10 says, "In The name of the Lord is a strong tower. This is another name of the Lord we'll see in the weeks ahead. But we even sang about that this morning too. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. It shows that there's strength. God is an awesome God. There's strength in Him. When He is near us, He can comfort us. He can carry us through. He can guide us. He can protect us. Hashem is a good God. But as we talked about already this morning again, too, uh, again a reminder for us that the name is not to be misused. As we know again from Exodus 20 verse 7, that commandment, you shall take shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. The Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Again, because his name is the name above all names, a name that is to be honored and glorified, to be praised. And that brings us to the last point this morning, is the name is to be glorified. You don't have to go through the Psalms very far to see that God's name is honored, is glorified. We can sing one or two songs and know very quickly too that the songs we sing, that we sing are to be songs that bring glory to God's name. I believe any song that we sing as a part of the church are to be songs that either speak of God, speak about a doctrine about God, or a response to God of how great God is. We are to glorify his name. Isaiah 24 verse 15 says, Therefore in the east give glory to the Lord. In the coastlands of the sea give glory to the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. The point that this verse is making from Isaiah is not, it doesn't matter where you are, wherever you are, to bring glory to God. Every moment of every day, even when we are struggling to bring glory to his name. Because his name is the name that is above all names. God is Hashem. 
the name, the name that is above all names. This is also the name that brings salvation. We know that as Christians, we know that we could do no good on our own to be saved from our sins. That it had to be Jesus who would die. Before, there would be a lamb or ram that would take upon the sin of a person or the nation of Israel. But as we see why Jesus came, he was the one, he was the perfect lamb who came and took upon himself the sin of the world. Again, showing that his name is the name above all names. In response to this good news, I'm going to encourage us to four points of action this morning. The first is this. Give honor to his name. Give honor to his name. In your times of prayer, give thanksgiving to him. Say, Lord, God, I thank you for this or for that. I praise you and give glory to you in your name because you are awesome, you are holy, you are just, you are kind, you are jealous, which is sounds like a negative characteristic, but it's actually a positive. He's jealous for us. He's vengeful for us. So give honor to his name. Also, second point of action is to give glory to his name. There's many psalms and words and songs that speak of giving honor and glory. We're to give glory to his name. Second, thirdly, we're to fear his name. Part of it has to be afraid, yes, because he's the one who created all things. He can destroy all things. But to fear his name has more to do with awe and respect. To look at God, to look at Hashem and say, You are amazing. I stand in awe, as the Course says. I stand in awe of you or to lay prostrate fall on the ground face first into the dirt because of how great and awesome God is to show that kind of honor and respect God's word even in First Timothy talks about too how men are to, to raise hands holy hands in prayer to the Lord when we pray and when we sing praises if we raise our hands to bring honor and glory to his name and last is to praise his name Praise isn't just music. It's also giving words of adoration to our Lord. We keep on coming back to this word of adoration, don't we? It's because we're to adore Hashem. Again, there's no other name like God. The name above all. There's a warning for us this morning as always. And if you don't heed these words, you will miss seeing how great God is. And you'll be in danger of sinning against him and stirring his anger and wrath against you. But, there's a blessing though too. If you do heed these words, you'll gain a great appreciation of, for God. And you'll want to love him more. And as you appreciate him and love him more, you get to see more and more how wonderful God is. You get to see the ample blessings he has given us. The many ways he has cared for us. Even when things are dark, we've talked about before, how he cares for us through those dark times. Do you want to see how great God is? Then bring honor to his name. In closing, I want to play a song for you. It's, it's actually a worship song we're planning on teaching in the future. A, so, a song called King of Glory. It's a song that speaks of how great God is too. How he is this King of Glory. His name is Hashem. The name above all names. It is this God that we worship. It is this God who is the King of glory. Hashem, the name above all. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for your name, that your name is the name above all names. There is no other name like yours. You are Hashem the name. You are Yahweh Hayah. You are Elohim. You are Adonai. 
Lord, and you are all the other names that we will continue to learn about through this series. God, you are an awesome and a wonderful God.